students let us discuss about the perineal body before we start our discussion let us look at a clinical case scenario a 28 year old full term pregnant woman came for delivery and she has undergone a midline episiotomy what pelvic and perianal structures are involved in this procedure if the perineal body is disrupted during the procedure what are the potential complications for this patient in the future describe each perineal body is also known as central tendon of perineum it is an irregular pyramidal fibromuscular mass and it is the point of attachment for muscle fibers from the pelvic floor and the perineum itself in this picture what is that you are seeing you are seeing the superficial perineal pouch and its contents so the superficial perineal pouch is the triangular area extending from the pubic symphysis and along the margins of ischiopubic ramus to the ischial tuberosity and it is connected by means of a imaginary line connecting the two ischial tuberosities and we have seen the contents and in this picture what we are seeing is a female superficial perineal pouch where you can see the urethral orifice and vaginal orifice and you are seeing the bulbospongiosus muscles on either side and the ischio cavernosus muscles along the ischio pubic ramus and the superficial transversus perineal muscle at the base of this triangular area so these are the two superficial transversus perineal muscles and the bulbospongiosus muscles and they are joining here and this is the area of perineal body which gives attachment to the muscles of pelvic floor and perineum here you are seeing the attachment of muscles of perineum and posterior to this you are seeing part of the orifice of the anal opening so this is the sphincter and external muscle fibers you are seeing surrounding the anal opening so what is the location of the perineal body it is located in the midline you can see it in this picture and it is subcutaneous and it is at the junction of the urogenital triangle and anal triangle so it is the central point of the perineum and it is about 1.25 cm from the anal margin that is it is 1.25 cm in front of anal margin and in the case of males it is close to the bulb of the penis and in the case of females it is close to the posterior wall of vestibule of vagina what you are seeing here is the female perineum and it is between the lower end of vagina and anal canal in females so in this picture we can see the urogenital triangle with urethral and vaginal orifices and the anal triangle with the anal orifice and the sphincter and externus muscle covering it or enclosing it and superficial to that will be the you are seeing parts of the pelvic diaphragm that is the puborectalis the pubococcygeus 
and the EO coccygeus components. That is the three components of the ureter RNA muscle and its relation to the perineal body. What are the measurements of the perineal body? Anteroposteriorly and from superior to inferior, it is about 2 to 4 centimeters in length. The apex of the perineal body, which I said is pyramidal, it receives the recto vesicle or the recto vesinal septum. And the muscles attached to the perineal body are divided into paired and unpaired. There are three paired muscles and there are three unpaired muscles. The paired muscles are the levator ani. The transversus perineae superficialis and the transversus perineae profundus. So, three paired muscles are levator ani, superficial transversus perineae and deep transversus perineae. In this picture, what you are seeing is the superficial perineal pouch. So, this is the perineal membrane and superficial to it in the anatomical position will be the deep pouch. In the superficial perineal pouch, you are seeing the transversus perineal superficialis muscle and correspondingly in the deep pouch, you will find the transversus perineal profundus and you know about the levator ani muscle. Coming to the three unpaired muscles or the bulbo spongiosus muscle, the sphincter ani externus, the superficial part of it which you can see in this picture and the other one is the sphincter urethrae. So, the three unpaired are the bulbospongiosis, sphincter anae, externus superficial part and sphincter urethrae. This is a diagram which will make you understand the names of these muscles, the three paired and three unpaired. At the apex of the perineal body will be the attachment of the pubococcygeus component of levator ani, and at the base of which you will find the transversus perineal superficialis and deep muscles, the bulbospongiosis, the external anal sphincter and sphincter urethrae. Follow this diagram. So, anteriorly you will find the sphincter urethrae in the male or urethrovaginal sphincter in the case of females. And posteriorly you are seeing the sphincter ani externus. Then towards the apex is the levator ani that is the pubococcygeus part. And at the base you are seeing the muscles that is the superficial and deep transversus perineal and the bulbospongiosis. You can remember these muscles by the mnemonic V-L-E-S-S-E-D that is blessed except for the, this small E which I have shown. Other letters stand for the three paired and three unpaired muscles that is the bulbospongiosis, the levator anal, external anal, sphincter, sphincter urethrae, superficial transverse perineal, deep transverse perineal muscles. Now let us see what are the functions of perineal body. It is the central attachment for the perineal muscles which we have listed out. Then it supports the pelvic floor. In women, it acts as a tear resistant body between the vagina and external anus sphincter. And it supports the 
posterior part of vaginal wall against prolapse of the uterus. So in this picture, what you are seeing is a, a woman in labor with the baby's head on perineum. And in such cases, to prevent the prolapse of the uterus due to the tear in the vaginal wall, what they will do is the episiotomy, an incision they will do to prevent the occurrence of prolapse of uterus. In the male, it lies between the bulb of penis and anus. What is the clinical importance of perineal body? In the clinical case scenario, we have learned that a midline episiotomy incision was given to the woman in labor. So what is episiotomy? It's a surgical incision of the perineum to enlarge the vaginal orifice during the childbirth. This is done to avoid damage by stretching or tearing of the perineal body that can lead to prolapse of pelvic viscera later on. This episiotomy can cause damage to vaginal mucosa but it prevents the tearing of the perineal body and it can avoid the prolapse of the pelvic viscera. So it can be given in the midline then you can call it as the midline episiotomy or it can be given extending to the lateral site it is the mediolateral incision. So the episiotomy is the incision given to prevent uncontrolled tear of perineum during childbirth and if it is the midline episiotomy it will cut the perineal body and the scar tissue replaces the connective tissue. If it is a mediolateral episiotomy it cuts away from the perineal body and in this picture you can see the fetal head in relation with the vaginal opening and see the location of anal opening and the midline episiotomy if it has to be extended there is the risk of extension into the anal opening and if it is mediolateral episiotomy it can be extended safely. So in the case of midline episiotomy which is associated with the higher incidence of prolapse of pelvic viscera that is uterus and rectum urinary and fetal incontinence and anovaginal fistulae. So there is greater risk of prolapse of pelvic viscera and then loss of control over the passage of urine and fecal matter and anovaginal fistulae. If it is a medio lateral episiotomy, it allows greater expansion of vagina and it avoids the chances of prolapse, the incontinence and fistulae. Hope oh, now you have understood what is perineal body where it is located and what are all the muscles attached to it and 
इट्स क्लिनिकल इंपॉर्टेंस